So, welcome to Let's Talk About It, and we're in Kitely, of course. Um, we've moved along the coast a bit, if you notice. Uh, but before we start the actual session, I just want to say, April, you asked about the vocabulary challenge, and I've been looking and looking and scratching my head. I tried to figure out a way to do an extra session. I can't. So... It will be all changed for Friday's session in Kitely. Uh, Friday's session in Kitely will be aimed at the previous week's vocabulary challenge, okay? Uh, at three o'clock then? Yes, the three o'clock session, yeah. Okay, and that way, if we don't cover everything, we can always sort of extend it a bit into TGIF. And, um, but I'm hoping we'll be able to do sort of one a week, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. It's just I've decided I don't want Monday live chat to be for the vocabulary session because it's the beginning of the week. Some people aren't, well, a lot of people aren't taking part in vocabulary challenge and um, it's a bit boring for them if they have to sit through that. Uh, Kitely is more restricted, as you know, for people who can take part. Um, and with the streaming and the fact I've got more visual elements in Kitely, I think it will lend itself. Okay, so um, who need? Does anybody need a a lounger? Rima, uh, there's a spare uh, yeah. lounger for Traum, so don't worry about standing and being a gentleman. Um, there are enough loungers for everybody. April. Come and lie with oh, me, uh, Hermina. Or, or <laughs> now there's an offer, Hermina. <laughs> <laughs> come lie with me, Hermina. <laughs> Sorry, April, you were saying. Uh, what was uh, my question again? Um, for vocabulary challenge, are you going to stream? Because I thought that uh, the, yes. the pictures is not... Uh, yes, I'm going to stream, but not with the pictures. <laughs> oh, not, not no, no, I can't stream the pictures. Well, I can, but then I can't publish them on YouTube. So I won't be streaming the picture. What I can do with Kitely, though, is I can, um, I don't know, find some bottles of shampoo, maybe some sun lotion, that kind of thing. <laughs> OK, but let's start on today's session. Otherwise, we won't get anything done. So last week we were and the week before we were down on the beach uh, on the seafront, it was an urban sort of seafront. You could go and buy your ice creams. You could um, maybe go to the pub. Uh, everything was there. But this week, we're somewhere a little bit different. How would you describe this immediate area where we're all sitting? What do you, where do you think we are geographically, geologically speaking, if you like? Um, Alex, you've got your mic open. If you could mute. Sorry, I, I didn't hear your question because uh, yeah, there's a lot of noise there. Microphone. Yeah, your microphone's open. Yes. But you're in a noise. Okay. Um, how would you describe this area where we're sitting? It's not really a beach. It's not really the seaside. It's along the coast, but how dry? Yes. Luckily, the tide's out. <laughs> Anything else? The shore, yes, but the shore can also be the beach. Um, there's a special term you can use for this kind of place. I don't know the term in English. Ah, yeah, that's always the problem, isn't a, it? <laughs> yes, when you have a, a high slope between the shore and the water. Yeah, that's often, you could call it a beach, but this isn't really, I mean, okay, we've got some sun loungers, but this isn't really the place you'd aim for if you wanted to go to the beach. We'd move further along the coast, back towards the ice cream shop if we wanted to be on the beach, past the dunes. And suddenly we're on a slightly different um, landscape, if you like, okay? Tram is, Tram is desperate to lie next to me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, you've done it, Charm. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid it's very difficult to share such things in uh, 
in uh, Kitely. It's not like Second Life. <laughs> oh, you can't see me again. I don't know. I had a, I had problems earlier as well. Maybe we've got a bit of lag on the servers. Anyway, we can hear each other. That's important. The streaming's working too, so you can always watch the um, the stream. I'm not in my bikini though. I'm sitting here uh, in my normal <laughs> outfit. So Rima, take the mic. We have uh, like uh, actually it's like a month. Uh, Siri from Montenegro they, they call it like if I try to literally translate Budva on the uh, on the form of the sea like because it's so close to to the water like and I, I don't know if it's like something similar um, like you can see like the bubbles from the sea like it's so so close to the water so i thought that maybe because we are so close to the water uh, so it's, it's not a very large no. area uh, can you type up what it is well we're next to some cliffs alex but I'm just trying to figure out what Rima means. Um, April wrote foam. Hmm. Uh, you can no, sometimes the, get foam. My question to, to Rima. Oh, okay. That was my question. Because he said foam. I, but I don't see any foam. Yes, but it's like, uh, you can't see, but it's like, uh, I don't know if it's maybe it's, it, uh, I can't translate it literally. Maybe it's because it's, they try to like uh, attractiveness of location like uh, the seaside is because it's so close to uh to the sea like it's we are right now so close to the water so like uh, this location is very attractive it's not one kilometers far away from from this place so so you can actually sm smell or something like it you can notice some bubbles and how uh, waves are coming or something similar, but I just literally translate because maybe we use in, in our language this. Um, I just translate it foam because it's so close, like you can't see the bubbles and everything in the water, like how water is moving because uh, because of this oh, of this short distance. Yeah. Can I have a question? Uh, that word "spume" is only when it comes to waves, or uh, okay. Um, or do you use that word for any okay? Other? Spume um, can be used in other forms, but really, that's the only time you'd hear it. Okay. Okay, and um, and most people would just say, "Oh, look at all that froth on the beach." <laughs> It's a bit of a specialist why, term. Yeah. But why it is like uh, like uh, you definitely noticed like when the waves hit hit some cliff or the rock and then they uh, still remain uh, something like uh, like I don't know if it's spume or a foam or something like it it's uh, it remains but they. I didn't, uh, it wasn't uh, stinky because it's like, uh, um, it's, 
it's in Montenegro it's like a, it's not smell as you Blin said. Yeah, okay. I by not, the way, uh, it's 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 good view actually. I, they they use it uh, for uh, some kind of superlative to uh, to speak about this place in superlative because near the 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 sea is uh, like a good uh, a very attractive location for uh, building some hotels or something like it rather than uh, going to one kilometers or more uh, further from the sea okay um yeah i mean <laughs> usually spume is like a residue it's there one minute gone the next it might lie around but then it will slowly disappear and i can't see any in this particular and it's not some something i would describe as a landscape it's more a phenomena if you like it's something that can happen um you know or there must have been a big storm out at sea because there's a lot of spume on the beach that kind of thing now, um, April's asked, is it a peninsula? I'm going to have to just zoom out a little bit just to see if we're on a peninsula. Not really. Not really. Because it's actually going in. So, geographically speaking, we're more on an, in, in an, on an inlet. Yeah, an inlet than a peninsula. Peninsula really does stick out. Um, and it's pretty much surrounded by water okay okay but there's a particular word i'm looking for because this if i stand up okay as i'm walking around it's not re we're not not really on sand there are some stones you can see where the water's come in and left the deposit behind and there's grass growing here um so what we tend to be on is, is more like mud than sand and it's flat so what we do is we call it a mud flat <laughs> literally oh, no. um, <laughs> 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 well you know whoever made up that word didn't have much in the way of imagination okay so we're actually lying on the mud flats looking out to sea now does everybody know what a mudflat is from that description? Do you have any in your country? Do you have any areas like this in your country? Rima, the area you were describing uh, to me, would that be described? Do you think that would take the name mudflat? Uh, in Serbia, we haven't seen, but uh, we, uh, we were together with Montenegro and so, I I usually go there because my roots are and my life is from Montenegro and uh, maybe if I got it right in one place that is like uh, maybe um, it's good like uh, for some kind of uh, reuma and similar Ill illness or diseases how to say to treat it like in in one place but usually oh that sounds like, like a, a mineral spa that sounds like a spa if people go there but to it's, take it's the all, waters to, to, <laughs> uh, to take the waters and to cover them with like uh with their some some specific place like to cover their bodies with this like uh Oh, it sounds like the sort of place uh, I should go. Healing, healing mud. <laughs> healing mud. <laughs> a healing mud. Okay. Well, it might. The mud might come from mud flats. Then um, that's very possible. So, how do you think these mud flats? Um, anybody else? Has anyone else got this kind of place in their country? But I thought that mud flat um, should be uh, wet, uh, not dry like this. Well. They are wet when the sea comes in. It's tidal, basically. They're also called tidal flats. So when the sea comes in, this is going to be wet. Okay. And, and when the sea goes out sure over the day, that? it will turn into a mud flat. Um, Alex, take the mic. Alex. Don't forget to unmute, Alex. 
Did Alex say mic? Yeah, Alex asked for the mic. Alex, can you hear me? Um, so Alex two two two. Okay, can't. Can anybody hear Alex? No. Oh, no. Have you unmuted? She didn't, didn't unmute her mic because she spoke two minutes ago. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just wondering. We did have a problem last week um, on Friday. It might be your connection again, Alex, I'm afraid. I can see a white dot, dot so I think everything should be working, but no green wavy lines. And if you look at yourself when you're speaking, if you don't see green wavy lines over your head, it normally means there's something wrong with your mic or your connection. So make sure your mic's fully plugged in. Oh, I, because, <laughs> and not muted at the actual mic part of your microphone as well. I did that the other week. I muted it. I've got this little sort of um, controller on the mic itself. And I forgot I'd muted it on the controller and I could not figure out why my mic wasn't working. <laughs> and also it plugs in. And I'd pulled out the plug once as well with my chair. I moved my chair back. The plug popped out. I didn't notice and nobody could hear me. <laughs> so Traum. Okay. In France, mud flats are natural areas. Exactly. Nice point, Alex. In fact, if you notice next to you, Alex, we've got a little bit of nature right next to you. And do be warned because in England, these guys can be very cheeky, especially if they think you've got food. So I'm just going to just check you out to see if you've got any fish and chips. <laughs> okay, Tram, <laughs> Tram, take the mic. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I, I was wrong when I bought, when I heard uh, uh, what's a mud flat. I thought it is uh, a wet area, as April mentioned, and I think when you go on, when you step on this mud, uh, it will uh, left footprints. You will a uh, bit you uh, your boots or shoes will be soaked, and I thought that could be a mud flat for me. And if it is so, we You're we right. have such, we have such mud flats in our. Uh, area because we have a river and when there is uh, running less water uh, and the sand bank comes uh, is visible and we go uh, down to the to the river uh, then uh, the the sand the wet sand will uh, will left footprints. Yes, yeah. exactly. But when the sand's wet, when the mud flats are wet, when the tide's just gone out, okay? They're often called, another word is coastal wetlands. So yes, that word wet is in there, but don't think it's always got to be wet, okay? Lee? Rima? Rima, yeah? You're muted. Oh, oh okay, okay, you're here. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I was I was just saying, and I'd muted my mic, you'll hear it in the recording. Um, <laughs> they're also called coastal wetlands. So yes, you can have this sort of idea of being wet, the area being wet. But of course, it's tidal. You know, the sea comes in, it goes out, it dries out a bit, then it comes back in again, and it goes out. Um, so they are, it is tidal, okay? Anyway, let's do a little bit of reading. Uh, who was the first to say hello to me today? Let's see. Okay. I think it was Alex, but Alex has had to log off. So the next one was Shiny. Shiny, are you okay to read today? Well, may I ask something? You haven't answered my question. So you said inlet, but I thought that inlet is only water, not uh, the land, no? Yeah, but the land, the water, the geography, I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll go to the inlet. You, it, you're describing the geographical feature, okay? It's an inlet. Whether you're standing on, on land or in the water, doesn't matter. You're in a, you're, um, it would be described as an inlet, okay? Uh. So shiny, 
I'm just trying to, sorry, I've lost my, uh, yes, please. Okay, good, good. Yeah, don't, I mean, it's like saying um, it's only a peninsula if you're standing on the land. Yeah, you can see a peninsula from the water and you can stand on the land and see the inlet and say, and describe it as an inlet. Okay. Oh, my house is built um, on an inlet. Okay, we we can, we've got direct access to the water, to the beach, etc. So don't don't get too hung up about the inlet's the water part, and there's another word for the land part. <laughs> okay. Okay, so shiny. If you'd like to start reading, here's your text. Mud flats or mud flats, also known as tidal flats are coastal wetlands that form when mud is deposited by tides or rivers. They are found in sheltered areas such as bays, bay, uh, bears, lagoons, and as to rarities, mud flats may be viewed geologically as exposed layers of bay mud, resulting from deposition of as to silts, clays, and marine animal detritus. Most of the Sediment within a mud flood is within the, the intertidal zone, and thus the flood is submerged and exposed approximately twice daily. Very good. So as you can see, tidal. So at some point, if we don't, if we're not careful, the tide could come in and we get, we end up um, getting our feet wet. <laughs> if we're lucky that's all that will happen and then when the tide goes out we can come down and sunbathe again nicely red shiny okay <laughs> okay i'm going to read that out i just had a message from Trump. lynn how can i kill the noisy seagull <laughs> come on it's nature <laughs> Okay, so let me just give Shiny her text. <laughs> um, we'll start with the word to know and known. Careful, it doesn't sound like noun. I know you've got grammar on the brain, but um, that can be fatal. Noun, but known, to know, yes? So to know, knew, and then the past participle, known. Try it. No. That's it. Good. Much better. And then the next one is a bayou. The bayou. Bayou. Yes. It's more of an American term. Okay. Uh, you can read books, um, especially, I think, anything set around New Orleans or down south. They often talk about the bayou. <laughs> down by the old bayou. And then lagoon. Not lag. L. Lagoon. Try it. Lagoon. Yeah. And then something that would describe this area, actually, that we're sitting, estuary. An estuary. Estuary. Yeah. And the last one, which is a, it's a little bit of a mean word to put in um, to learners, but it's, it's a word that's used a lot. Detritus. Any, anybody know what detritus is? Like a debris. Yeah, debris. Mm, sorry. Debris, silent S. Okay. Detritus, oh. not a silent S. Yeah, any kind of waste or debris uh, is detritus. Okay. And you can also call it, um, you can use that word to describe this kind of sand, gravel, mud, silt mix. So what, what we've got in this um, mud flat, we've got a mixture of sand, silt, 
mud and gravel okay little stones and it makes this mud flat and that's why we've got a problem with the seagulls because they love these areas okay any questions apart from killing seagulls <laughs> You've got a visitor, Traum. <laughs> now I'll move. I'll move him a bit further away if he's annoying you. Uh, if if you're finding it difficult to hear, though, just in case. But we're not killing any anybody. <laughs> Hang on. Let me move him. Send him out to sea so he can go and get some food. Okay. Is that any better? Oh, maybe it's this one. Actually, he's going to be even noisier. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was the one that was flying. It's not. Okay, he's going to go and get some food there. Okay, is that better, Traum? <laughs> Thank you, Rima. Yes, much better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the, the um, text is in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I can give you another copy of it. When, I'm not doing a notepad. I'm just putting it in chat. Okay, so Alex, have you got voice? My next question, of course. Can we hear you? <sighs> oh, no. No, I can't hear you, Alex. I'm sorry. I don't know what's what's wrong with your mic or your mic setup or something. I don't know. I don't understand it. So the next person I think on my list is Monique. Are you OK to read Monique? OK. OK. Hold on. Try this. I'll start. OK. OK. some lovely uh, terms here. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> okay. I know, I don't understand it either, Alex. I can only think you've got a wibbly-wobbly connection. That's the only thing that could have make this difference. Anyway, Monique, here's your text, if you'd like to read that when you're ready. Okay, tidal flats along with... The, with intertidal salt marshes and uh, mangrove forests are important ecosy ecosystems. They usually support large, a large population of wildlife and are a key habitat that allows tens of millions of migratory shorebirds to migrate from breeding sites in the northern hemisphere to non-breeding areas in the southern hemisphere. They are often of uh, vital importance to migratory birds, as well as certain species uh, of crabs, mollusks, and uh, fish. In the United Kingdom, mudflats have been classified as biodiversity action plan priority habitat. Very good, nicely read, well done. Okay, so yeah, tidal flats, and you can see more terminology um, that would sort of describe these areas mangrove forests, salt marshes, intertidal salt marshes. Um, they're not just biodiverse, they're actually vocabulary diverse. <laughs> okay, so just two little words for you. Well done for correcting yourself. When you see ECO, yep. it's eco. So you sometimes might see this word eco warrior. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard of an eco warrior somebody who fights for ecology. So we say eco, but ecology yep. and ecological. So it's a funny one. And then with an H, that's when we have the term echo, echo, like echo, 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 echo. There's echo here. <laughs> so echo is when um, you're testing your microphone in Webinar Jam and you hear an echo, or you should. <laughs> Echo, echo, echo. That's yeah. the one. I think there is a song, actually. 
I can hear you echo, echo, echo. Or am I thinking about umbrella, rella, rella? I don't know. <laughs> and then mollusks, a mollusk. I knew it. Yay. <laughs> yeah, because I said molluscus. No. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> molluscus, okay. Mollusk. And those of you who were in, um, those of you who were in the book reading for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, can anybody name a mollusk? <laughs> who can name a mollusk? Anybody? Alex is French. Alice, Alex should know one mollusk. It's got a go. Yeah, snails are mollusks. Absolutely. And you also get octopuses, mussels. Oh, um, so oh, anybody, April, you should have known mussels. <laughs> a staple part of the staple diet in uh, your area, I think. Mussels. Mussels is lux. Yeah, awesome. snails in your garden, they're mollusks, etc. Yeah. So mollusk and sometimes mollusk. Yeah. Okay. But escargot is snail in English. Snail. Okay. Oyster slim? Is that the mollusk? Um, is an oyster a I think mollusk? So. I think it must be, because it's not got. It's, it's in a, a shell. shell. Yeah, it's in a shell. Yes, it's a mollusk. Oh, probably. Yeah. It's a bivalve mollusk. <laughs> you want to get really technical? Because <laughs> they squirt along. That's how they move. I don't know if you've ever watched nature programs that show how oysters move. It's quite fascinating. It really is. So, yeah, maybe we'll find some oysters here. Oh, I wonder. Have I got an oyster in my inventory? Oyster. Okay, let's have an oyster. Okay, there's a mollusk for us. Okay. Doesn't look very mollusky, but um, there you go. He'll do. He'll do. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Seems to be just the top half of an oyster, so I don't know. Anyway, let's put them in there. Okay, so um, any questions? Salt marshes, is that the salt uh, bath? So it's the same as salt bath. I'm not sure what you mean. Can you type it up, April? Salts. Do you mean bog? Marshes. 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 Yeah. Salt marshes. You said, is, it, is that the same as salt? Did you mean salt bog? Bath. Salt bath. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we call, I, I call that bath because it is uh, divided in in square uh, uh, bath actually. The salt, so the, isn't it? I think. Gosh, um, I'm not sure what you mean. Salt bath. Do you mean bath salts? Not bath salt, uh, bath salt. You mean uh, for to us, for us? Yeah, bath salts <laughs> would be something you put into your bath. I haven't no. heard of salt baths at all. No, if or you squares. go to the to the, uh, <laughs> to the beach where they they uh, they gain the salt. Ah, the salt. okay. I've got you. It's I've got divided. you. The, the place, the region is place is divided in in uh, boxes. Yeah, kind of. Uh, Square where boxes. where they're trying I, I to extract the salt, yeah, where they're trying to yeah. extract the salt. I have no idea what you call the area where they try to extract the salt. Okay, I've been there. I've been because 
Ask hubby. I'm forbidden from buying any salt at the moment. I love buying salt. I go to places, I buy salt. I don't know why. It's one of my things. Uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to buy any more till we've used up some of what we've got. But yes, places like Guermond, um, they're not salt mines. They're just salt extraction areas, I guess. Um, and yes, they divide the... Uh, the area into squares and then they dry it out and I know what you mean exactly now so um, yeah salt extraction that's what I can find here so if anybody wants to have a look here okay that's a salt extraction area but I don't think we've got I wouldn't call them salt baths no <laughs> personally because if you say salt baths to me I think of something I can get in and have a nice relaxing soak they probably wouldn't want you me to do that. <laughs> but then you have to... <laughs> But a marsh is more, um, a salt marsh is more uh, a wetland that's continually wet. Okay, you were talking about, oh, but it's not wet, April. Uh, a wetland marsh is continually wet and boggy. Okay, and you get much more vegetation on wetland areas. Uh, with longer grass and um, uh, cattails and um, let me just if we wanted a wetland here it would have to be more towards the water maybe and let me just see uh, okay so if I give you an idea of some wetland okay so it would have longer, greener area. It wouldn't be dried out. It would be more like this, okay? If you look along, along the coast a bit, towards the inlet, towards the end of the inlet, um, you'll see a little bit of salt marsh, okay? In fact, in the UK, there are parts of the UK where uh, they graze sheep on salt marshes and the meat is slightly salty. It's very expensive. It's called salt marsh lamb. OK, uh, so. <laughs> Not quite hybrid sheep, no, but they, they graze off this salty grass. And so the meat takes on a slightly salty uh, taste. And yeah, very expensive though. So I think the next person uh, to read will be Traum. Traum, are you okay to read? Yes, I'm, I am. Okay. <clears throat> and thank you for the, I, I do not know what you did actually with the seagulls, but uh, the I relocated silence them. is, <laughs> uh <-huh>. okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so there's your text, Trump. <laughs> okay. The maintenance of mud flats is important in preventing coast, coastal erosion. Er 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 However, mud flats worldwide are under threat from predicted, sorry, uh, uh, predicted sea level rises, land claims for development, stretching due to shipping purposes and chemical pollution. In some parts of the world, in some parts of the world, such as East and South East Asia, mud flats have been reclaimed for uh, aquaculture, agriculture, and industrial development. For example, around the Yellow Sea region of East Asia, more than 65% of mud flats present in the early 1950s had been destroyed by the late 2000s. Very good. Well done. Nicely read. So, any questions?
Uh, why is it destroyed? I don't understand. Uh... Okay. Yeah, why, why are we destroying these places? Well, I can give you a very good current example. Might not happen, but it might happen if Bojo gets his way. Um, Boris Johnson wants... Well, Heathrow needs to be expanded, they say. And Boris Johnson wants a new runway built on the mudflats on the es Thames estuary. OK, now there's a lot of opposition, but we are encroaching. Once upon a time, these areas were seen as useless, a waste of space, a waste of land. They'd be drained, turned into farmland or uh, they'd be used for dumping stuff into them. And it's only as we've become more ecologically aware that we realise how important they are in the whole biodiversity that people talk about nowadays okay so we are destroying these habitats uh what do you mean april we think we think what do you mean? You think that we know more about ecology? Well, we think, but yeah. Well, we do. It. No, that's unfair. We do know more. Um, problem is, most people couldn't care less. <laughs> if it in, the thing is, if it, it starts to inconvenience us, we're very cruel to nature. We're very cruel to nature. Okay, We fight her every step of the way as soon as she becomes inconvenient. Anyway, um, let me give Traum her feedback. So first of all, um, we do say to maintain Traum. So the verb is to maintain something, to keep it working. Yeah, I have to maintain the websites. And then we have maintenance, maintenance. I do a de schwa sound. Mm, your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Oh, yes, okay. Yes. Maintenance. Not mine, main. Maintenance. Main, okay, maintenance. That's it. If I give you the, um, you'll see it. Maintenance. Oop. Okay. Maintain. Okay. There you go. So maintenance. Okay. Maintenance. Yeah. And uh -huh. if you notice, the okay. middle uh, is in brackets. That means some people might say maintenance, uh, but it's not good English. Maintenance is better. Maintenance is a bit slangy. OK. Maintenance. Maintenance. OK. Then erosion. Erosion. To erode. OK. Erosion. Erosion. Ero erosion. Not shun, jun. Erosion. Yes, better. E yeah, that's it. Erosion. Okay. Now, April, that also oh, destroys yeah, these habitats. Okay. But that's nature doing it. And uh, whenever you live along the coast, you are in danger of um, suffering from some kind of effect of erosion. I posted something on interesting facts where... Uh, a whole hotel fell into the sea. <laughs> Just poof, it would gone. It had gone through erosion. And um, erosion. That's it, yeah. Erosion. Okay. Then the next one. Okay. It's the whole phrase. Okay, such as East okay. and Southeast Asia. So you've got East Asia and Southeast Asia, but you split it up. Rather than saying such as East Asia and Southeast Asia, you just say such as East and Southeast Asia. OK. Yeah, I, I saw this, but when, during my reading, my the computer gave me uh, a notification that the battery is running down. And so the whole uh, the, uh, the, the, the letters were uh, hidden by the message I got. Ah. And therefore I, I, and I, I, I knew I, I was wrong when I read it. But now I'll try it again. This, this time better, I hope so. Such as East and Southeast Asia. That's much better. Southeast well done. Asia. Yes. <laughs> good, good. Well done. Well done. Any questions?
No, then let's see who's next in the I reading. I think I understand. I understood. I, I think I understood the uh, text completely. Good. Well done. Because there's a little bit of um, special, what I call specialist vocabulary in this. You know, it's not always easy to understand some of this specialist vocabulary. Yes, I know. And it's very dangerous to ask this to, to, to Lynn, uh, to ask, to, uh, to say this uh, in front of uh, Lynn, because she will find and ask some question that could uh, be not so fine for me. Yeah. Am I that scary? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were scared, you'd have to say no, no, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm not. No, no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not at all. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. But, uh, I fear you could find. I, I fear you could find a word or a phrase and ask me, and I would <laughs> blush maybe. <laughs> well, that's all right because we can't see your face. So <laughs> anyway, um, Reem, have you got voice? Can we hear you? Can you hear us? It's okay here. Yay, no excellent. Hands. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you your text stream whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, there you go. Yes. Yes. Uh, med flat said uh, segment segment this a poisons are focused into the intertidally intertidally zone which is compound uh, composed of a uh, apparent zone march and still band Within this area are various ratios re ratios of sound and melt that take up the sediment sedimentary sedimentary layers. Uh, the uh, the as scouted grow, uh, growth of the Castillo said meant this despoisits can be attributed to rate of uh, sub substance along with rate of rit ratios of uh, this position example still transported the uh, river and change uh, in sea level Okay, well done, well done. And well done, I could tell that you were looking at the words and taking care, okay? Now, that means we're going yeah. to work on the pronunciation more. So I'm being a bit more, yeah. I'm being a bit more um, strict on your pronunciation than I have been. So don't scream when you see the corrections, okay? That's why you're here. Yeah. Okay, first, yeah. the deposits. Think about going to the bank and putting money in. You make a deposit. And when the tide comes in, the sea brings in everything, all the detritus from out at sea, and it deposits it on the sand. So, deposits. Try it. De deposits. That's it. Good. Then you've got the word tidal. Tidal. The tides. Yeah, the tides come in, they go out. And that's tidal, the tidal movement of the sea. Try it. Tidal. Tidal. Yeah. And then in between, as they're coming in and going out, we call it intertidal. Intertidal. Perfect. Yeah. It's just syllables, remember. Don't be too scared when you see a long word. Just intertidal. Four syllables. Intertidal. 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 Inter That's it. Yeah. English is composed of syllables, and once you can figure out the syllables, you can pretty much figure out the pronunciation. So the next one, composed, made up of, composed. Try it. Composed. Very composed. good. And then 
Marsh. Not March. March is with the C H. Marsh. Yes. Marsh. That's it. Good. Marsh. And then one that you might need if you do math. Ratios. Yeah, ratios. Ratios, ratios. yeah. The ratio of ratios. men to women in this session, the women are winning. Okay, we've got a, a one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got a six to two ratio of women to men in this session. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, six to two ratio. <laughs> You're outnumbered, guys. Okay, the next one is um, sand. 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 That's it. Sand. sand and mud. 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 That's it. Uh, sedimentary, another long word. So let's look at it. We've got sedimentary. 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 That's sedimentary. It. Four syllables. Four syllables. Uh, a bit yeah. more. So if you clap it, sedimentary. Five. One, two, three, five. four, five. Sedimentary. Five. Okay. Sedimentary. That's sedimentary. It. Perfect. Then associated. 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 Yes. Now, I'm sure if I wrote, I've noticed this with you, if I wrote associate, to so you'd be fine. It adds that D, puts it into the past, it throws you. It's just ud. Sometimes it's a silent E, but in this case, we pronounce the E. Normally, when it's T-E-D, the E is pronounced associated. Okay? Associated. Good. Then coastal. Again, you know coast... So don't be confused yes. when something's added to that word. Use the word coast and then think, okay, al or ul. It's got to be one or the other. This is ul, so coastal. Try it. Coastal. Good. Coastal. Yeah. Next one. Attributed. Attributed. Uh, attributed. Yeah. Attributed. Sorry, I've just looked at the attributed. context. Attributed, not attributed. Attributed. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it now. <laughs> attributed. 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 Yeah. The, That's the it. Three syllables with, with stress in the three and a P. Attributed. 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 Okay, good. To attribute something, or uh, to attribute something, something has attributes. Okay. Okay. I, I have to be careful about doing the syllable bit because then I might throw myself off on my own pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, um, subsidence. Subside, but subsidence. Subsidence. That's subsidence. it. Subsidence. That's it. Now, if something subsides, it slips. It it moves to one side. So you've got erosion, where the sea is moving the land away, eating away at the land. Then you have subsidence, where the land is falling away, if you like. Okay. So oh, yeah. it's pretty dangerous living on land, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next one, um, rates, not ratios, rates. Rate. That's rate. it. Yeah, different rates, different amounts in this context, yeah. Uh, a different rate of erosion, a different rate of subsidence, different amounts. Yeah. And the last one is via, via. Via, via. That's it, yes. When you go to the shops, you might go... Um, via the coffee shop. So you go to the coffee shop first, then you go to the shops. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure what people have... Oh, sorry, Monique had to go. Sorry, Monique. I'm sorry. I'll just send her a bye. <laughs> okay.
Take any questions. Thanks. You're welcome. What does it mean? Rates, Herlin. Rates of subsidence. The tempo. The the, the speed. The speed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Different rates. Different amounts of subs. So one area might be quite solid, and the next bit it's subsiding at a much faster rate. Okay. So you said subsidence is uh, when. Uh, the land falling the, uh, falling away, away yes um, in the, the UK position? well in the UK we have a bad problem okay um, of subsidence in places where there has been mining over the years and suddenly houses start basically dropping into the earth <laughs> and cracks appear in the walls. You have to have your house checked for subsidence if you buy a house in the UK, especially if it used to be a mining area. Germany too, anywhere where there's been... Same problem in France, okay, Alex. Yeah, it's a big problem because the house looks solid. What you don't realise is underneath the house, where you can't see, there's a great big hole. <laughs> Yeah, a and hole. What do, do Not a hole. A hole. What hole? What hole? Oh, I I can't I can't remember the name. So the hole that the sinkholes. Uh, uh, the sinkholes. A sinkhole. Yeah, yeah sinkhole. that's massive subsidence. Okay, a sinkhole is a total collapse of the area of Earth. Subsidence is more a slippage. Okay, so the house doesn't disappear, but suddenly it's. The, the, the walls aren't quite straight. The floors are a little bit off kilter. Uh, you start getting cracks in the ceiling or in the walls and you know you've got a problem with subsidence. We won't go into this. That would be more about the renovations, I think. We won't go into it too much. But um, yeah, you can end up having to underpin your house and have major work done. So yes, if you buy a house in any part of the world where there's been massive uh, mining or any kind of extraction, even water extraction can cause subsidence, then you need to have a proper survey done. <laughs> okay. And the position is in the river, Lynn? The de deposits, you mean? Deposition, the de deposition, de no? Um, no, deposition is more a legal term. Uh, at the at the end of the of the text, with rates of deposition. Oh yes, sorry, yeah, yeah, with rates of deposition. That's when the, the stuff's coming in rather than being taken out. Like your bank account, you put money in, you deposit it, then the money's gone into your bank. You have more money in your bank. Okay. You take the money out, you extract it, and you've got less money in your bank. Okay. Um, careful case, of the word happens, deposition uh, because, sorry, I didn't realise that's what that's the one you meant. It can also mean when somebody writes um, their statement in a court of law is a, de is a deposition. I've got that on the brain at the moment because I'm fascinated with what's happening in America. <laughs> Subsidence can exist along the coast, as can erosion. Um, Alex, it depends how the, um, the land is being affected as to whether it's erosion or subsidence. Okay, So a cliff collapsing into the sea could be erosion or subsidence. Okay. And what do we call uh, that mud that uh, if you... Uh, stand on there you will be sucked in that's quicksand uh, what do we... quicksand yep okay that's quicksand or marsh or bog marshes and bogs can also have that effect but on a, on the along the coast like this you have to watch out for quicksand actually you're, you're very unlikely to drown in quicksand what normally happens is you get stuck in it and then the tide comes in and then you're toast <laughs> okay, so very, very quickly, April, I don't think you've got to read yet, have you? Um, well, am I the last one? You are. You'll have to be the last one, yes, I'm afraid. So uh, I'm afraid you've got a horrible word in here, but there you go. <laughs> There's your bit, okay? Okay. 
Barren zones extend from the lowest portion of the inter intertidal zone to the marsh areas. Be beginning in close proximity to the tidal bars, sand-dominated layers are prominent and become increasingly muddy throughout the tidal channels. Common bedding types include laminated sand, ripple bedding, and bay mud. Bioturbation also has a strong presence in barren zones. Very good. Bioturbation. My goodness, what a word. <laughs> That's a specialist geolo geological word. It just means where you've got um, the wildlife or the, um, the living organisms like worms and mussels and um, anything that sort of digs into the sand or the soil that's bioturbation disturbance well done um april i'd just like you to read that little snippet out please in close proximity to perfect perfect well done <laughs> i wasn't 100 percent certain whether you said close or close i didn't quite or catch close. it i wanted to check <laughs> Very good, well done. Okay, so we know a little bit more about mud flats now, I think. Um, so sorry you didn't get to read Tough Guy, um, but I, I didn't have you on my list early enough to time it properly. So uh, next time, remind me. Okay, and any questions, just write them on the forum. But we'll be in uh, Webinar Jam in 15 minutes or so. And um, my, Monique sent me a message about hair, but I'm not sure what she meant. Monique, I don't know what you mean about hair, but I will check. And I'm sorry I didn't see you leave. I was concentrating on um, giving corrections. Sorry about that. So if you're watching this, Monique, I apologise. <laughs> don't forget to stand up before you log out, everybody. Alex, I I don't know what to suggest unless um, ask, my, ask Aladdin if he's running an Ask Aladdin session on Monday because I think you really need some technical assistance with your it's either your connection or your setup but there's no reason why it should be working and then it should stop working unless it's your connection so there might be something you can do to improve the stability of your connection okay but anyway I hope you enjoyed the session anyway and uh, we will See each other, I'm sure, in another session. Fingers crossed it will work. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.